As part of the compiler, there are built-in functions that you can use with null terminated character arrays or NTCAs, otherwise known as C strings or C style strings. Most of these functions you can, you know, write yourself. It'd be just as easy to do so. But they're there for your convenience. In fact, there are alternate versions that I'll mention at the end of this lesson. So let's take a look first at the string length function. String length will return an integer and take in a null terminated character array. And what it returns is the length of the data in that array. So for example, if I declare a character array and initialize it to hello, then we see a picture of it here. And the data is of length what? It's of length 5. That is, there are five characters before the null character. Passing array to string length will return 5, and our output then will be 5. Oh, feeling sick. Let's take a look at string copy. String copy will return nothing, but it takes as arguments two null terminated character arrays. If I have source length 10 and it's initialized to hey and target again of length 10 and it's initialized to boy howdy. Okay, here are pictures of these two arrays. Then if I do a string copy target comma source, what this is going to do will copy the value of the C string or null terminate character array in source into target. Passing them in, you see that target no longer reads boy howdy, but hey, and then the null character, and howdy. The null character is automatically placed in the array by the built-in function. So for example, we want to give a value to a null terminated character array after it has been declared. Well, now you've got the answer to this question. Suppose that I declare a character array of length, say, 10. Okay, so this entity has been declared. How do I give it a value of, say, Bob? Can I do this? No, absolutely not. That will not compile. Remember, we learned that in the last lesson. You cannot assign to a null terminate character array. So how do we do it? Simply use string copy. So it's str, cpy, the target, which in this case would be array, and then what it is you want to copy into it. That would be the string bob. So this should be an indication as to how a constant literal is stored internally in the compiler. It's stored as a null terminated character array, because the arguments to string copy must be null terminated character arrays. What if we have string copy target high? Okay, so target's turned into high and then the null character. Now remember that whatever comes after that null character is no longer data, it's just junk. What happens then if I do a string copy to target of the string burrito toppings? What I'm going to get is burrito top and I've run out of room. This is one of the failings of the built-in functions for C strings. That is, that if the data fits, the null character is automatically placed at the end of the data. But if the data doesn't fit, then you've got a real problem. Okay, so there really should be a null character here, but there is none. And now what you have is an array of characters that it would be thought of as being a null terminate character array, but it is not. The null character is not placed in there, and this can cause some real problems in the future. So you have to be really, really careful about uh, having the data fit into the, um, the structure. Okay, moving right along. String concatenation is taken care of by the string cat function. Again, this function will take as arguments to null terminated character arrays and it returns nothing. Source is an array of 10 and let's give it an initial value of there. Target again an array of 10 let's give it an initial value of high 
what happens when I string cat, target, and source? Well, source is going to be appended to the end of target. It's concatenated. I'm going to end up with a T H E R E here, and then the null character. And sure enough, there it is. Again, the chance that you're going to overshoot the length of this array. So what happens here? String cat, target, uh, exclamation, exclamation. Okay, that's going to put an exclamation here, and here, and a null here. And we'll see, sure enough, what happens if I do it again then? That's going to put an exclamation point here, and null, null character, and we end up with what we thought should be a null terminated character array, but it isn't. Moving right along to string compare. Now you remember that it was illegal to do this, to say if ntca1, ntca2, then so forth and so on. We can't do this. This is illegal. So how is it that we compare two strings to null terminate character arrays? We do it with the string compare function. Now here's an interesting fact. This function is going to return an integer. And one might think, well, you know, we could return 0 if they are not the same. They're not identically the same. And we can return 1 if they are the same. That would seem logical, except that I can return more information if I change up how I do this. And different implementations of the function will do different things. But our implementation is as follows. It will return 0 if the two strings are identical. And it will return 1 or negative 1, depending on which one is quote unquote larger than the other one. The comparison is made lexicographically. That is, the compiler will run down the array, looking at each character, comparing their ASCII values. And when one position differs, then the comparison stops and one is going to be returned if the ASCII value of the present character is in NTCA1 is larger than the ASCII value of the current positioned character in NTCA2. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. We have uh, array 1 is Bob, array 2 is Bob, and array 3 is Bob, but spelled with an uppercase B. So what's string compare uh, passing NTCA1 and NTCA2. Well, they're identical, so this is going to return 0. How about string compare NTCA1, NTCA3, lowercase bob compared to uppercase b, lowercase ob. When the compiler gets to that first character, it notices a difference. Now, the ASCII value for the lowercase b is 98, if I remember correctly. And for the uppercase b, I believe that's 66. In any case, the lowercase b is greater than the uppercase b. And so this is going to return a 1. OK, how about comparing into CA3 to into CA1? That's going to give us a negative 1, because, of course, it's exactly opposite. And then comparing into CA1 to the constant literal string, bobby, well, we get the same at the first location, second location, third location. But now, for NTCA1, the next character is the null character. Its value is 0. And that's compared to lowercase b, which is 98. And so this is going to give you a negative 1. That is, the second argument is greater than the second string argument to the function has a greater value in that position than corresponding location in the first array. Let's take a look at an if statement. If not string compared to CA1 and to CA2, these strings are identical. Okay, so I'm asking if the two strings are identical, output this message. So why the not? Well, again, remember that if the two strings are identical, then it's going to return a 0, which is synonymous with false. And so it makes sense that you put that not there. 
The dangers, of course, are always you can walk off the array but with both string copy and string cat. So, for example, if source is walk this way, target is empty, let's do a string copy of source into target. So now I've got target nearly full, and then I'm going to string cat source on the target again, and I end up with a string that's far too long to put into that array. We also have available three other functions, uh, another version of the very same function. Notice the difference is the n in the middle, and the only difference here is that now these functions have a third parameter, so they take a third argument, and that is for string copy, the third argument is going to designate how many characters you want to copy. For string compare, how many characters you want to compare, and for string cat, how many characters of the source do you want to concatenate over onto the uh, target. Now the problem with these functions is they are thought of as being uh, safer, uh, and they're not. You can walk off the array just as easily with these as you can with the others. I don't think I've ever used these, but of course you can.